What is up everybody? This is Ronnie from Canva. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one, we are going to create a YouTube thumbnail like this one for your YouTube channel. So if you're ready, let's jump into Canva. Okay, so I am now on the Canva homepage and I'm going to use the search bar right here to search for my exact document. So I'm, I want to design a thumbnail for YouTube. Okay, so thumbnail YouTube, and I can see that Canva has the thumbnail uh, document right here, 1280 by 720 pixels. So I'm going to click on that. So from here, I can go to different directions. I can start with a template or I can start with a blank canvas. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to go with the blank canvas. All right, so uh, this is my document and I am ready to start creating. So I have this idea in my mind. I want to um, promote my new video, which is about teaching kids to paint from home because, you know, kids are bored nowadays. They are at home. They don't go to school and uh, well, you need some activities to keep them busy. So I want to create that thumbnail for my new video, teaching kids how to paint from home. All right. So I will need, of course, some um, nice, lively colors for kids. I will need some photos of kids, etc., etc. So I'm going to start uh, by finding the relevant photos, okay? I, and I kind of have this idea, I want to put my photos into different shapes, but some kind of irregular shapes. I don't want the square or the triangle shapes. Let's see what we have here in our grids. Maybe not grid, but shapes. Let's see, uh, frames, sorry. So what I'm looking for is frames. So I like this one, irregular one, but I would love to see something more like rounded like these ones. So I'm going to use this one. This looks good. I'm going to make this bigger because I want to insert my main photo in here, making sure it is centered and maybe a secondary one. So that was this one. Maybe I use this one, make that smaller here and use it kind of like that. Okay, so that will give me a good base already for my design. Okay, so now I have my frames. What I need to search for are some photos. So I'm going to switch over to my photo tab right here. And I'm going to search for kid art classes. Kind of like this. This is nice. Let's see if I can work with this. Yeah, this is nice. Okay, so what I want to do with this, not put in my frame right now because I want to use the background remover, which is a pro feature. You will need to have a Canva Pro account. So uh, once you have your photo selected, just click on effects and then background remover here should be the first effect. Once you have your photo selected and click on effect, just click on the background remover. All right, so this is what I have, which is not bad. I can see some uh, little remainings here of my photo uh, at the bottom of this, but this is no biggie because I can crop it like this and there. I want to make this kid slightly bigger to about here. So this is quite cute. And I like the fact that she's a little bit on top of the other shapes right here. So this is perfect. Now, what I need are some photos of her paintings for putting inside these uh, little frames right here. Okay, so let's start searching for kid paintings. Ah, this, this is perfect. So I'm going to use this one right here and I need something else. Yeah, this looks good. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with these. Yep, okay. This looks good to me. Uh, I can work with this. Now we have some kind of harmonious color palette. I can adjust a little bit, but I will do this uh, later. Now I need to add a couple of elements to this design to make it really look nice. First, I'm going to be adding a, a, back, uh, a background here, a background color. Okay, so I could use some of the photo colors. So photo colors, for those of you who have never seen this feature, um, is when you have photos inserted in your design and you click on the color box, uh, Canva will 
kind of extract the five dominant colors from each of your photos and show them to you here. So I have the little girl and I have the hand painting here. I have all the dominant colors. Uh, so I could use one of these colors, but I want more contrast. Maybe I, I want like a very pale yellow, a warm yellow actually could be nicer, but that's a little bit too close to the shirt, the color of her shirt. So let's see if I can um, I can tweak this yellow color to have it slightly lighter. Yeah, paler like this, something like this would be nice. Let me see. I want kind of a pastel yellow. Okay, this could work. This is nice. And yellow is actually a good color, I believe, for uh, YouTube because it attracts the attention. It attracts the eye. Um, yeah, it's it's a nice color to use for your thumbnails because you want your thumbnails to catch people's attention, obviously. Uh, so now let me show you more tricks here to make this this overall design pop more. So for example, this shape right here, uh, this frame right here, I want to duplicate it. So I'm going to click on the biggest one, duplicate, and then just using the filter here to add a color. So you see, instead of a, an image inside this um, frame, I'm just adding a plain color like I did right here. And I'm going to push that backwards. Okay, so it's behind my actual photo. And you see it creates a nice cool shape behind it. And I'm going to do the same thing for the second uh, photo right here. So again, uh, I could go with the same color. I could use a slightly different one. Let's see how it works with this one. Maybe give it a little bit of transparency and push it back. So position, push it backwards like this. So now you see I have my two um, kind of shadows of each of these frames, but I'm not entirely satisfied about the color of this one. So I could go maybe with the red that she has on her hands and push that back to 100%. And I'm going to push that even back more to the back like this. Okay, this looks decent. So what I can do here and go slightly less like this. So I don't have uh, I don't have anything here behind her her hand. Okay, that looks good. It starts to re really resemble a thumbnail right here. What else could I do here? So I could do a couple of more things. For example. Let me show you. You know how often on YouTube you have these thumbnails with kind of a, like a glow around uh, the people, like their faces or like a silhouette around them. So we are trying, we're going to try to reproduce this. So in order to do this, you have to click on your photo, you will duplicate it, and then I'm going to apply an effect, which is a duotone, okay? So I'm gonna click on this. I will need to connect the duotone effect. And now if I click on see all, you can see all the different duotones here. So let's go for a white silhouette. Okay, so if you want white and you don't see white here, the, the trick to get there is just to select any of these. So I'm just gonna click on Fuchsia for now. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but what you need to do is to then click on the settings right here. Okay, so I have the settings and I will put both colors to white. So first and the second, both white. And I will apply my effect. You see, this is how it looks like. And then the next thing I'll do is to blur that effect, uh, to blur that silhouette. So for that, I'm going to go to my adjust button and add some blur. And I can do this slightly bigger. And now I have this glow right here that I can push back backwards, you see? So you s I have this white glow on this side, which is nice. I'm going to duplicate that and slightly move this second silhouette and push it back and then duplicate one more time and push it all the way to the other side and push it back. Let me see. Yep, this is pretty cool. I'm pretty happy about this result. Uh, now I need something else. I'm not totally happy about this background. It's a little plain. Of course, there will be my text here or a keyword or something coming here 
to give me an indication of what's in this video. Okay, uh, so maybe I can start with this. So let me type, I'm just going to type uh, board, board, like question mark, board, are you bored, little girl? Um, do you need something to do at home? Like, are you tired of watching TV? Uh, so board, uh, and then I'm going to change this for a font that I like. It is siphon, siphon, yes, siphon. This is a, like a nice kid looking font. So I'm going to go for 120 and reduce slightly the space between the different letters. Okay, so going to my spacing button right here and the letters I would go for minus 30. Yeah, minus 30. Let's see how it looks. Pretty good. All right, so this is good. I'm going to go for a yellow and I'm going to copy this with the duplicate button here. Um, and maybe instead of the black, I'll go red. So I stay with the same color palette and I will try to use the same kind of effect as under my photos here in my frames. Okay, board. And then I need a second line here that says, so I'm going to use my T key, T for text. You can remember this shortcut. If you press the T key on your keyboard, it opens a text box. Uh, so board at home. And for the second font right here, I'm going to use another font, which is a handwritten kind of font. So I don't know which one exactly handwriting. I'm going to select this keyword for my fonts and Canva is going to show me different um, different handwriting fonts right here. There's one called finger paint. So how more relevant could that be? So I'm going to use this one board at, at home. Yep, so that's good. I need this to be bigger because people need to be able to read it even if it's at 10. Yeah, slightly, I would say I need to improve the size of this. I like to zoom all the way back to 10 when I create YouTube thumbnails because if you can read it at 10, that means there's no problem. You will be able to read that from your phone. You will be able to read that from basically anywhere. So again, board at home. Yeah, I can read that. So that's fine. Let's zoom back in. All right. So board at home. Let me maybe zoom to fit my screen. Okay. What else can I do? Uh, it's a little bit too packed here. So what I could do to select all of this, maybe make it slightly bigger, slightly smaller. Sorry like this. Now I have a bit more space. Let's make sure this is still over my photos right here because I liked that effect. Okay, so now the final touches. Uh, there's still something wrong with this background. So let me fix this first. What I'm going to do to fix this is to search for a pattern. So uh, I will be selecting my elements category, get rid of the frames and search for mm, paint pattern. something I can use, add some transparency, but it adds an element of fun to my design. So this could be it, but it's too crowded. I think I've seen one here. So these, okay, this is good. So I'm going to cover my design with this by just stretching it kind of like this. This is good. I want all of this to be, mm, let's say yellow, darker yellow. Okay, just one in only one color and I'm going to push that to the back. That should be the last, the last layer I would say of my design. So this is looking good guys. Maybe one thing I could do is to add some transparency, maybe to 50% might be too much. So let's bring it back up to 75. Okay, so now we have this board at home. Uh, yeah, I think this is pretty good. I can reason reasonably say that we have accomplished our mission of creating that uh, YouTube thumbnail. So maybe the last thing we could do is to tweak the photos. You see, this one is a little bit more luminous. This one is too dark. So I'm going to just click on it, click on the adjust button and add some brightness. 
and some contrasts so that every photo kind of looks the same because there were different photos from the library and and sometimes they have different luminosity settings different uh, different different things so it's really up to you to try to match these colors so this one also it would be nice if I don't see the hand or actually let's see yeah this looks good all right so I'm happy with this maybe a little bit more luminosity on this one as well just adjust yes all right now this looks really good guys i'm really happy with this thumbnail so what i'm going to do is to simply export this in png format and show you how it looks all right so you can see our thumbnail is looking great we have the little girl with the red hands and we have consistent color over this also, we have a title that kind of awakens my curiosity, like bored at home. And then you can clearly see that there is something going on. Uh, so the title of the video will be complementing this thumbnail, of course. I believe personally, it's good to have your thumbnail complementing the title, like not having the exact same keywords on your title and on your thumbnail. So this is it guys. I hope you liked this tutorial. I would love to see your version. Show us your thumbnails in the comments. This was Ronnie from Canva. Thank you for watching until the end and I will see you in the next video.